everybody thanks for checking out this video if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel log in real quick before you listen to it and subscribe also if you haven't yet listened to the first three parts of this suffering series it would probably make a lot more sense to go back first and listen to those before you start up this video but whatever works for you and to find that love and practice these things is here's why it's difficult it all comes back to the thinking rational mind so your ego doesn't want to be destroyed it's you you don't want to be destroyed you want there to be a you you cling so much to your identity of self i want there to be a me so it will bring up any possible distraction to keep you from doing it like meditation is just a good example you'll sit down and meditate and right away you'll be like, man, I should be doing my homework. I should get up and let the dogs out. I got to be here. And every time at first you'll run off with that and you'll do it. And you'll be like, okay, yeah, I do got to do that. Until you get enough awareness to realize what's going on. And you're like, oh, just that thought trying to get me again. And you get bored with them and you're like, no, no, I'm going to just sit here and do what I got to do. And since that's in such opposition, because your mind can keep you trapped as long as you're running all day same thing with like i said once you have this then you could go out so say a fully enlightened being doesn't have to meditate because they're in that state always but somebody somebody like us who's trying to get there we have to sit out and we have to keep we have to extricate our attachment from our daily affairs a little bit so that we are not so attached to them but we can get another perspective and another awareness so a lot of times when you sit down to meditate so much stuff will come up at first and a good meditation which is extremely good meditation which is extremely difficult is just to sit there without following your breath without chanting without messing with your chakras without listening to anything and just sit there with your mind and it won't it might not be that peaceful at first because all the things you have buried in there are going to start pushing up to the surface and that's just going to be the beginning of it because you have clingings and impressions of your mind that you probably carried with you for a thousand lifetimes and in incarnations but they're going to start coming up to the surface because you're finally sitting there in a room being quiet like in Rumi's poetry there's a poem where he says a little while alone in your room can do you more good than anything that will ever be given you. And that is so interesting because it seems so simple, but how many people right now can go in a room, sit there quiet and alone without a TV or a book or without watching porn or without texting or talking to somebody on the phone and just being with themselves. And that's why the ego doesn't want that to be that way because then you see through its illusory nature, the illusory nature of who you think you are, of who I think that I am. So as I learn to extricate myself from my own melodrama, I'm able to act more in harmony with the universe. And that comes to our last question, which is God's will. What is what is God's will and what is not God's will? Because I realized a long time ago it wasn't like doing, people say doing the next right thing is God's will. So how do you even know what the next right thing is? How presumptuous of you to say? Because you could go up to me right now, screw me over, tell a lie about me, get me fired from my job. That might be the best thing that ever happened to me. Maybe it was exactly what I needed to lead me on the next course. So who was right? Who was wrong? Was that God's will? Was it? that not God's will was that bad just like in the Bible where Jesus said this has to be done like I have to be turned in and put on the cross but woe to the one who does it so was Judas good was he bad was he creating more karma for himself there's actually a gospel of Judas that got found in the 1900s that would give you a really interesting perspective if you care to read it but you know, what? what is God's will and what is not God's will? Because in one sense, you could say that everything in this entire universe and everything that's ever happened is God's will. Because otherwise it couldn't be. It couldn't exist. Right? But there's also the aspect of living in harmony with the universe. So you're either 
you're either doing what you do out of attachment to your separateness or you're doing what you do as a part of the whole. If you do what you do as a part of the whole, that's when you get moved along by nature where you could do something like a very high being could get angry at somebody and in their heart there's no real anger there but that was the nature of the moment that was what that being had to get you know and think about how many times somebody's been hard on you and you hated them and you thought it was bad but it was exactly what you needed to get you know and they might have been attached to it they might have been creating more karma for their, themselves but you see it all works perfectly and all works exactly how it's supposed to be so everything is ultimately god's will but if you want to work on the actual process of surrendering to god's will to living by god's will to thy will not mine that is the will of the universe not the will of the of alex of the separate entity that is clinging to attach because think about how many attachments you have how many preferences do you have how much stuff do you want for yourself whether it's the next milkshake or the next toy or the next thing of money or the next person to have sex with or the next thrill or the next little fun thing. How much wanting? You have so many preferences, so many things you want, so many desires. And it doesn't mean that they're bad in themselves. It doesn't mean that you can't get stuff or do stuff. But how much are you so attached to them? You know, how much are you so attached to right or wrong? And here's where you see the ultimate, because the ego is not what it's usually portrayed to be. There's a sense of people thinking ego means like, people used to think a couple years ago that ego just meant you have a big ego, you think you're better than them. Like that's your big ego, you're prideful. People realize it's way more than that now. And people have always known, but in common society, people realize it's more than that now. Like, oh, ego ties up in everything. And it really does. Ego is your whole sense of self your whole identity so it's not that it's a bad thing that's how you function that's how i relate to you is through our egos the ego has so many little nuances and subtleties that it's so hard to get you, you it's such a web like alan watts would talk about the ego being like robbers and but next floor so it gets more and they run up to the next floor and they keep running up and there's unlimited floors apparently but uh they it, it keeps running and hiding and it manifests in different ways and maybe you want power now maybe you want money then and maybe now you want a bunch of sex and then you got over all those and you think you're free and maybe now you got a big ego about you're doing good at meditation or you got some good spiritual work or you're sitting there in total bliss feeling great with god and then you're like wow i must have did something good for this bam comes right back in so like i was doing that once recently today actually repeating the name of god over and over and over and i was could feel just a light i could just see a light in my face and i felt total bliss i felt total bliss and for like a minute or two or maybe like five minutes i i don't know i wasn't really in time then but right away the thought pops up wow you're really getting somewhere <laughs> and then bam it's gone so it, it's subtle and like we just got to work with where we're at and you don't want to think any of this is bad or wrong or anything like that like that's just more stuff to get you caught in so don't get mad at yourself for thinking this or that you just observe it and you work with where you're at one of my favorite things teachings is from Ram Dass who I talk about a lot because I dearly love him but he would always say ah uh, so so whatever you see if you see oh gluttony ah uh, so just observe it or a good thing oh happiness ah uh, so oh sadness ah uh, so joy ah uh, so sorrow ah uh, so being able to just accept what comes like there's a story actually that I round us told this I heard it so there was a guy a woman that got pregnant super young or something in this town right and she, it was a disgrace she was like it was the monk's kid it's his kid he had it with me so they bring the monk to the 
they bring the monk to the kid, or they bring the kid to the monk, and they give it to him, and they're like, yeah, this is your baby, dude, you gotta raise him. And the monk goes, ah, so, and he takes the baby. He didn't say a thing. And they come back like 10 years later because the woman was dying and she admitted that it wasn't the monk's kid. And the kid's like 10 now. And they come back and they're like, oh, we're here to take the kid back. It wasn't yours after all. And the monk says, ah, so, and he gives them back the baby. And there's another story about a horse. So there, this man's horse runs away and the neighbor's like, oh man, that sucks, your horse ran away. And he was like, yeah, maybe so, you never know. And then he came back and he said, isn't that good luck, your horse came back. And he said, you never know. And then his son got on the horse and fell and broke his leg. And he said, oh, that's bad luck, your son broke his leg. And he said, you never know. And then the army comes by looking for soldiers and they can't take the son because his leg's broken. And he says, oh, isn't that good luck? Your son didn't get taken because he broke his leg. And the guy says, you never know. And and that's the whole thing about it. You never know. Once, And it says, you don't have to be good. You don't have to walk on your knees for a thousand miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let that sweet part of your soul love what it loves.